Now, in all likelihood, we'll be regretting this guide come part three of From Beyond, everybody. However, that's nothing to revisit can't fix, right? Says in all honesty, it has kind of pained me to go nearly half a year without a specific showcase on some of Don't Start Together's newest materials, just like Dreadstone here. And with Terrors Below officially out now, the dark and dense stuff not only has more uses than ever, but it's actually 110% required to quote-unquote finish the game. So let's discuss. And Refine as the first and arguably best source of the crap is none other than Wilson's with the Shadow Courtier skill there. For you see, these players can turn three pure horrors into one chunk of dreadstone, or turn around and transmute one piece of dreadstone into two pure horrors instead. Now both are mighty useful, with the former being made extremely easy with the introduction of infused shadelings and all that too, so make notes. Beyond such things though, we don't really have that many options as you might want, as they're actually completely locked behind bosses as well, like the Nightmare Wear here, found chained up in our muddy biomes, his cracked pillars are a ticket to more dread, however, we'll have to work for it. Regular tools won't do a thing, but net us a marble is only the pick axe or bright shade smasher can actually rattle these pillars enough to free the guy and start the fight. A fight that starts a bit strange, as we truly won't be able to do anything unless we ourselves are insane, so do make a huge note there too. But once the shadelings are finished, and the guy begins to stalk, a mechanic that sees him regenerating health, by the way, every time he's doing it, the fight is on. Hitting him with a ranged attack to end that stalking is advised, however the main meat of the fight is dodging his lunge three times, only to get 11 hits in ourselves over and over and over again essentially. But that said, once below 5000 health, the guy earns himself a slam attack that we must now use against these pillars for 3-4 dreadstone, or else we'll lose out on said opportunity once he's dead. Continue to dodge that slam though while getting hits in yourself, and he'll eventually return to that very lunging mechanic to end the whole shindig. So finish him off yourself for some noteworthy loot including three separate dreadstone related blueprints for your pleasure, and fight him in roughly 20 days in the same rough area after he despawns. Have fun, but perhaps save some of that dreadstone as the last source of the stuff is very, very endgamey. And funny enough, we even need five dreadstone to reach it in the first place. Kill the ancient fuel weaver, offer the beckoning hand five pieces of the stuff, say hello to your ex-girlfriend for a minute, wait around for five days for the rifts to generate, or just turn them on instantly in the settings of course, and the dreadstone outcropping can be yours. Well, as long as the rift is active and you're nearby a nightmare fissure of course, this fresh set piece drops three dreadstone if mine before killing our new friends there, but note that rafts can no longer do it himself. We will once more need either a bright shade smasher or a pick axe to get the job done. Don't forget it, as yes, this stuff can kind of despawn without giving us dreadstone too. Which kind of sucks, but you better do it, otherwise you're going to miss out on making some of the cool stuff. Like dreadstone armor here, both the helmet and chest piece offer us 840 durability, 90% damage reduction, and a sanity drain that gets a bit tricky fast. However, their first set bonus is also one that have said sanity drain, so be aware of that. But in what way does this sanity drain change, you ask? Well, if either piece is damaged, their drains actually double, but again, their set bonus actually has this, so I suppose take advantage. In fact, take advantage of all sanity drains in relation to these things, as the less sanity we have, the faster they regenerate. Yes, you heard that right. They regen their durability over time in relation to our maximum sanities, and their second set bonus sees that very mechanic actually getting better when they're together. It's good stuff, and they're not even finished yet. Not when either piece can help reduce the damage taken by nightmares by roughly 10%, but also how both are shadow armor themselves, therefore both Maxwell and Wanda benefit greatly. So make all the notes. But old up beard, are you gonna ignore walls as you're known to do? Nope, I just saved them for their own segment as they're somewhat strange honestly. Dreadstone walls have the highest durability of any wall around at 800 in total, and can be repaired with dreadstone itself of course, or other dreadstone walls, which which in and of itself is not surprising, but the repair speed is. For whatever reason, dreadstone walls are not only more efficient to repair than any other wall in this game, and it's not even close, they too take roughly 25% of player damage, just like Moonrock walls. Why? I really don't know. 
But it is a thing, all right, that really should extend two mobs at this point in the game's history, but it doesn't. Get on that, Clay. But lastly, yes, Dreadstone also goes into the most post-end game station that we have so far, the Shadowcraft Plinth Kit here. The thing that grants us access to the new Void Gear at the end of the day. But good luck, and have fun with it all. As there you have it, everyone, a long-awaited guide on one of the many of Don't Starve Together's newest materials, Dreadstone. It might be a bit of a dread to get, but it could very well be worth it. We'll see you in part three, but thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.